So welcome to this short summary of the translation session. So once again, not designed to replace the lecture, just to give a brief summary of some of the things that we talked about. Um, so translation um, is the conversion of messenger RNA into protein. And we began the session by talking quite a lot about the um, the code contained within messenger RNA. And I showed you this diagram here, the codon dictionary. Um, we talked about how to read it so that we, we explained that message RNA is read in threes called codons. Uh, first, second and third position of the three letters tells you which amino acid is added to the growing polypeptide chain. We talked about a number of properties of this codon dictionary. The fact that it's continuous, the fact that it's non-overlapping. We talked about uh, its redundancy, the fact that most um, amino acids, in fact, all but two, tryptophan and methionine, have multiple codons that encode for them. We talked about the wobble hypothesis, and there's several slides that explain each of these properties of the codon dictionary. We then moved on to the actual translation process itself, and we focused here mostly on uh, prokaryotes as our example. Um, so. We start, divided this into three phases, initiation, elongation, and then the termination area. Now, the initiation area, we talked about ribosome structure, and we talked about um, what they're composed of. So we focused on the 50S and 30S large and small components of a bacterial ribosome and the uh, RNAs um, and the so the ribosomal RNAs and the proteins that you find within those subunits. We talked particularly about within the small uh, subunit of um, uh, the bacterial uh, ribosome, the 30S unit. There's a 16S ribosomal RNA, and this contains uh, the Schleim-Dalgarno sequence, which matches a sequence it's very purine rich that you find in the five prime uh, and translated region of the um, uh, uh, of the messenger RNA. Uh, and these two things help anchor the ribosome in the correct place. Correct place, you say? That's because the start. One of the properties of the codon dictionary up here, the AUG, is that the first amino acid in the polypeptide chain is always a methionine coded by AUG. And the Schleim-Dalgarno sequence is up here to help correctly orientate this. Um, why do we need the Schleim-Dalgarno sequence? Well, there could be other AUGs somewhere in our code. We need to make sure that we get the correct one. So then. We, we, once we have this with the help of some initiation factors, the top part of the ribosome, the large subunit can join along with the first of our amino acids. How does it get there? The first amino acid is attached to a transfer RNA shown by this little structure here, which on its bottom, its backside, has the opposite sequence to the, uh, the one that's on the messenger RNA. This is called the anticodon. So the codon and the anticodon. So if you want to think of it in very simple ways, you've got these three letters which are then read by the ribosome. It then looks for a transfer RNA that's got the opposite sequence, brings it to the ribosome, uh, and then takes the amino acid off of it and then adds it to its growing polypeptide chain. Um, of course, it does that in molecular terms rather than the example I've just described. Um, so AUG. From our code on dictionary, we can see A, U, G encodes a methionine. So the first amino acid is methionine. It just so happens that the first one is actually a formulated methionine here, slightly modified. Let me explain, by, explain why in the lecture why that is the case. But then we go along one code on at a time and read them. So once we've got the first one, as you can see down on this slide here, we then would read what this code on says and then bring the transfer RNA with the correct amino acid into this site. And then we with joint add it to the growing chain and then repeat the process over and over again. And in the lecture, we talked about the P, the A and the E sites and the relationship that these have in reading the codons and adding the correct amino acid to the peptide chain. 
We also talked about the molecular reaction that takes place to join together the amino acids here. We finished off this by the termination phase, explaining what happens here. Um, so there are three codons, which are in the gene itself, not in the untranslated region, which are A, UAA, UAG, UGA. So these are stop codons or nonsense codons, or sometimes called chain terminating codons. Um, when one of these is red, as you can see here, UAG, um, instead of a transfer RNA pulling the slot, a relief factor uh, does. Remember in the lecture, they look they're very, very much like Pac-Man ghosts. Um, a relief factor binds, and when the amino acids, uh, polypeptidogen is tried to be cut here and joined across to this, there's nothing to attach to, and it's released into the cell. Um, we finished off the lecture by trying to link together this process to you know, the cell, um, you know, where the ribosomes are located, the, the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, and, and um, all the signaling peptides involved in making sure the proteins go to the correct place. Okay, hope you found that useful.